Hey you guys, it's Lacey. I'm coming to you with another review video. This is the review for The Assassination of Gianni Versace, Episode 4, Season 2. This episode is titled The House by the Lake. We're going to hop on right into it. So the show starts off on one of those typical 90s, generic, boring-ass, you know, uh, tourist videos about Minneapolis or something saying many uh, represented the word uh, water and then Polish represented the word city and it has 13 rivers which I think is very occult like which is, I think is kind of beautiful and it is um, they're all they're attached to Mississippi River and whatever and then after the, uh, the well, generic video gets over they get uh, shoot to a scene to David Madsen's apartment now, David Madsen is a friend of Andrew Cunanan. Andrew wants him to be his lover, but Andrew is, you know, he's, he's fucking nuts, and David is not really interested. Um, David is a junior architect, and he works at the John Ryan Architects. Um, so he's getting a call about, he's telling someone, oh, I know I'm not, I know this position is for senior architects, but if you give me the chance, I won't disappoint you. So he basically is climbing up in the world. So he's kind of like a, a much, much younger version of Lee Miglin. And um, we, we start, I see the connection to the immediate hostility that he met Lee Miglin with in the last episode. Um, because, you know, it kind of reminds him of an older, more established, um, the end result of what David Madsen would have gone on to be. And so he's on the phone. He's like, "Oh, I got the, I got the gig. I got, you know, I got a chance to prove myself." So he's probably, he's about to work his way into making the money he should be making in that field. I think architecture and IT and probably nursing. Nursing will probably be at the bottom of the list. But those two jobs, architecture and IT, those jobs you can make fucking buku. So he's about to work his work his way up in the world. And he's very excited, and um, he's telling Andrew, you know, you know, all the good news. And Andrew's like, "Oh, I'm happy for you." And it's like, "Bitch, no, I'm no, 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 you're not happy for me. I'd rather motherfucker just say it than you sit up there and be completely deranged and act like you're happy for me. You really just wanna, you know, plunge a fucking knife in my back and whatnot." I hate when I get that mess, um, text messages. Sorry. So, you know, he's like, well, let's, David tells Andrew, well, let's just, you know, what well, we said this week, we didn't mean it. We said a lot of things we didn't mean, so let's just let it go. He's like, no, I, Andrew said, I meant what I said. He was like, oh, okay. Well, then let's just move on. And he's like, okay, cool. So David goes to take a shower and he acts like he's going to take um, the dog prints not prints, but prints, like fingerprints. He acts like he's going to take the dog for a walk. He doesn't. He ties the dog to a chair. And then he, I think when David was in the shower, he called over, um, I believe he called Jeffrey Trail over. And it gets to a scene where uh, David is working, you know, trying to finish up his blueprints or whatever for his job and whatnot. And um, Jeffrey rings the buzzer. Now, Excuse me, y'all. I'm just having... It's cold as fucking out here. It's, it keeps snowing. It makes me sleepy. I hate the fucking snow, yet I keep moving to colder places. Story of my fucking life. Anyway. <laughs> Jeffrey rings a buzzer. Now, the way that um, David's buzzer is set up, he hasn't set it up so he can buzz people in the building. So he's just... Uh, he has to go down and physically open the door. Um, apparently from the news articles that I read, uh, they had like a running joke about him not having an automatic buzzer. He has to go down there. Like, oh, someone has to go to the lobby. You know, that was a joke between everybody about David's actual apartment. Um, so he goes down and he gets Jeffrey and before he leaves, Andrew says, oh, well, you can go down and, you know, open the door for Jeff, bring him up and this will give you guys a chance to talk about me. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, you guys can talk to each other about me on your way up here. I'm like, don't bring Jeff up here. Matter of fact, we need to go ahead and call the police because there's something wrong with him. Don't don't bring Jeff up here. His dumb ass goes down there and brings Jeff up. He's like, I don't have time for this. I'm like, oh, 
fucking idiot, right? He goes down there. He brings up Jeffrey Trail. Jeffrey Trail is being pay- played by the um, actor Finn Whitrock. He was on um, American Horror Story Freak Show. He was the overprivileged... Um, he wasn't even a little boy, but he acted like one. He was an overprivileged kid, a man who was rich, and his mother was coddling him so much. You know, typical, you know, school shooter shit. Just that privileged thing. It's kind of like that old man, old white man who went to uh, Las Vegas and he was shooting up everything and they said it was because he lost millions. I'm like, okay, well, you were worth multi-millions, so you'll be all right. Get the fuck over it. So, yeah, he uh, Finn, Finn Whitrock is playing um, Jeffrey Trail. Apparently, I think from what I read from my sources... Jeffrey Trail is a, a military veteran, and I think he was, I thought he was still enlisted. I thought he was in the Navy or something. I wasn't quite sure. I was getting all types of different sources. I, I'll cite it a little bit better for the next video. But, um, so he comes up, and he was talking about, and, no, not Andy. What's his name? David. He tells Jeffrey he knows about us. He's like, he can't know. Like, yeah, he knows about us. And um, he asked me to marry him, and he and you know, Jeff was like, "How'd you get out of that one?" He said, "He said I told him it's illegal for us to get married." And I was like, <laughs> "Cause it's this is April twenty seventh, nineteen ninety seven. This is a week before Andrew goes and murders Lee Miglin. So uh, from my research, from my understanding of things, same sex marriage wasn't legalized till two thousand fifteen. So yeah, it was." It was a it was a long bit, like maybe eighteen years before it was legalized, and about mm, ten years before the sodomy laws were struck down. Um, so they go up there, and basically, um, David is asking Jeff, "Why are you here if you don't trust Andy? You know, why are you here to see him?" He said, "Because that motherfucker took my gun." And I was like. Nigga, may the fuck day. May day. Don't go upstairs. You don't have a gun. He has your gun. He's emotionally distressed. He feels romantically rejected. This, this is a recipe for you about to get shot. A recipe. Don't go up there. What the fuck? Like, shit, man. Come on. America's Most Wanted is out by this time. And he's a military personnel, so he knows all the symptoms of people who are insane and how you deal with them. So don't just walk up into that motherfucker and you don't have no burner. Like, God damn. God damn it, Jeff. It's rooting for you. What the fuck are you doing? So he goes up there with his dumb ass with no protection. As soon as he gets up there, he doesn't even really get to... He was about to say a whole bunch of smart ass shit to Andrew. He doesn't even get to get it out. Andrew pushes David to the side and lunges at Jeff with a fucking hammer and beats him to death and hits him. He has like 27 blows that puncture into his skull. And that's how he dies. His blood is all over the place. Um, and he has um, David help him roll his body in a rug and then push him out the wall and then push this ottoman um, up against him. Like, first of all, the, what what does that do? I mean, it's better than leaving the body in the middle of the entryway where the front door is, but it's still blood stains everywhere, and somebody is going to smell this body. That blood is going to make it stink, and uh, it's going to deteriorate. The, and then the organs are not going to help it smell any better. So I'm like, you got to get the f- fuck rid of the body, but instead they didn't. They kept it in there. Um... Poor David. He was watching him murder Jeff, and he was so horrified. I'm like, I can't even imagine what that must feel like to watch somebody get murdered, and you just, like, you know. Because I, David wasn't even about the bloodshed and all that. He didn't like that at all. And and you can you can see that with later on scenes with his dad as a hunter. So David is, like, shuddering. He's like, what the fuck? Did that, you just do? Why did you do that? And he asked him, why did you do that? And he's like, well, I, I just lost myself in the moment. And I'm like, no, the fuck you didn't. You knew what you was doing. You told him to go to go down there and get him, and he brought him up. So if he would have died, it would have looked like he did it because nobody saw you in there. They only saw him coming up there with Jeff. So um, 
he was shuddering. And Andrew picked David up and he took him to the shower and made him take his clothes off. He took his clothes off. They both took a shower and they got dressed. They got dried off and dressed and all the rest of that. Um, I want to know who taught these people to shower. Like, showers are not that fucking quick. I mean, I guess getting the blood off is, but that's not that quick. Cause, cause David's lab, his original shower wasn't that long, and it's like, no, showers need to be longer than that. They need to be longer. You're not clean. I don't. You don't even look like you smell like soap. I don't feel that you're clean, but whatever. I just the boy, the man is traumatized right now, so it doesn't really matter. So he's like, well, just I would feel better if Andrew, if you call the police. He's like, okay, I will. And so he comes back a little later on, and he was like, what did they say? And he just said, I decided that I will, um, I'll call them if you want me to. So the motherfucker never called at all and had no intention on calling. And so then he was like, Andrew, give me the phone. And he's like, no, no, I, I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about your future. I'll get 30 years, you'll get 10, and I can't let them take your, um, I can't let them take your life from you like that. I just won't allow it. I just won't allow it. And so he, um, at, by this time, David is on the phone with 911, but he hangs up. I'm like, all the people at this point, just by episode four, the gay man he was in Miami with, that he uh, typed his head around and he was afraid to call because he had been assaulted and he had he put his ring back on. He was an older queen. He could have called. The lady, um, the ma the brother at the uh, fish place who did call, and they came up. But by the time they came in, Andy left. The lady that was at that cash on the beach place, and she reported him seven days before uh, Gianni got shot. Now you have, oh boy, he was on the phone and he hung it up. I'm like, shit. It's all just my God. <sighs> I guess that's why when uh, now... When people, they call in a lot of areas, if you call and you hang up or something like that, they'll still send somebody out there. I guess that's why they do that in many other cases. This is, this is, this is just judicially pissed me off. This entire case has pissed me off. This was piss poor. They didn't put out them fucking flyers. Nobody felt that they could call because they were going to get shamed. I'm like, my God, I'd rather be shamed than to sit up here and let a, a murderer go free. Fuck that. I, I'm worth millions. I'll fix that with my wife later. You can buy the press off. Jesus Christ. So he hangs up the phone and he's like, you know, trying to console him. And, and basically, David's like, I need to talk to my dad. My dad knows what to do. He's like, no, no, you can't talk to your dad because your dad will be obligated to turn you in. And you can't do that to him. You can't make him um, hold an obligation because he would never turn you in. It would eat him alive. And I'm like, oh, fuck you. You're not looking out for his best interest. You're looking out for your own. You're not shit and never have been. So, um, David wants to leave. Andrew was like, he, you know, get, he gets in front of him. He said, listen, I'll let you leave when you thought this through. And he's like, I want to leave now. He blocked the door. When you thought it through. I'm like, bitch, I, see, I'm, I'm, why are you blocking the door, Andy? Come on, man. I don't. I don't like this, man. I don't like closed, tight spaces, my nigga. You need to move. Like, that shit would have pissed me off and frightened me all at the same time. So eventually, um, they go out for a walk. He walks Prin Prince. Prince. What's that nigga's name? The dog. Prince. Prince. With, you know, like the fingerprints. Uh, he walks him. And he's trying to stay calm. And one of the neighbors gets in the elevator. And she's like, oh, hi, dog. You know, hi, Prince. And he's she's talking to David, and he's, like, tense. And she can tell something is wrong, but she kind of, like, just, like, maybe he just had an argument or some shit. He's just acting weird. And he was kind of doing one of those, bitch, help me, mayday, 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 one of them shits. This motherfucker, she wasn't paying attention. She was trying to play it off, like, probably, like, oh, it's not my business. Uh, they probably just had a fight. You know, shit like that. So they go for a walk. And, um, as they're walking, um, before they go for the walk, David stops Andrew and he says, listen, you're not going to hurt anybody else, are you? He's like, no, not as long as you're by my side. I'm like, fuck, I'm obligated to be with you for long periods of time and shit. 
Oh, uh, so he walks out and then they walk back in because he's nervous. He's trying to get away from Andrew, but he's nervous because, you know, he doesn't know what else Andrew will do because Andrew is so fucking insane right now. So basically, uh, Andrew, long story short, he makes David pack up because his um, co-worker, Linda, is it Linda? His co-worker, Linda, has come up there from uh, John Ryan Architects. And he um, he's missed work. And he would never miss work. So that's made her nervous. And she come over there like a good co-worker should. If I miss work, you need to come uh, fucking text me, bitch, because something's wrong. Um, and she brings up the building manager. I think her name is Jennifer Weiberg. Um, they just called her Jennifer in the uh, in the show so she the dog prince he's barking and they let uh jennifer lets linda in is linda yeah i keep wanting to call her lydia for some shit i i think it's because i watched the steve harvey show i'm sorry um jennifer lets linda in by before she lets linda in david and uh andrew are talking and he's like we gotta go i i gotta let her in He's like, uh, Andrew's like, no, because when you let her in, she's going to see that body, and what do you think she's going to do? You know, and he's like, well, let's, we got to call the police, and Andrew's like, no, that they hate us, they hate our type, because, you know, he, he said the, um, the homophobic slur I won't repeat. He said, you know, we're gay men, we're queens, and they, they don't like us, they hate us. And so, um, he basically, they, he makes them leave, and he, I, they, they hint that it was involuntary, but from what I researched, they don't understand what was going on with the situation. They don't know. One article stated they didn't know if it was like a Patty Hearst situation where she was with, like Patty Hearst was like, she was involved with some type of activity, illegal activity. I think it was robbing banks or some shit. And she was with the shits until they got caught. And it was her and a bunch of black guys. She was with the shits until they got caught. And then she said, oh, no. They um they hypnotized me. They made me do it. I'm like, bitch, didn't nobody make you do shit. You did that shit on your own, and then you hit that white privilege when the shit uh you saw fit to it. So they was like, we don't know if it was a Patty Hearst situation or if he really was riding out, and then the shit just went wrong, and then you know, what we really know about the situation. So they there's no clear evidence about what happened. Um, we know that Jeff was murdered, and we know that Andrew did it. Because his hands was on the the murder weapon, and they did find the murder weapon. I, I'm not sure when they found it or where they found it, but I know they did find it. His prints were on there. Um, but the whole David um, Madsen uh, scenario was very... Um, it's not very clear-cut. It was interesting that he murdered David and, and, and um, Jeffrey because I thought he murdered Elizabeth and her husband from episode one when he was in her house and um, talking about um, being invited to Gianni Versace in the opera. With Gianni Versace to the opera, sorry. And so they leave and they're on the road and um, they go to a bathroom stop and this lady is looking at him. And he was looking at the lady and she was looking at him and I guess she, she looked like, what the fuck are you looking at? That's what she looked like to me. But he was like, oh, she knows me. And Andrew was like, that's impossible. She didn't recognize you. They're not even running the story yet. So there's no way that she recognized you. Calm the fuck down before you get me caught. And then I really have to kill your ass. Uh, so he was like, well, I, I just know that she did. I just know that she did. And he's like, no. And so by that time, they're driving. They end up at a bar. And what's that? Amy Mann is singing. Her actual, she actually is an artist an entertainer and her name actually is Amy Mann. Um God damn it. I'm gonna have to find that thing. Never mind, sorry, y'all trying to look for something and I don't have it in here. Um her name is actually is Amy Mann. She's performing basically about, you know, regrets and losing and things of that nature. And it makes Andrew tear up. You can see the humanity in him, but he still is a monster. He he's still a motherfucker you love to hate. And basically, that's going to be his role for this series. And he well deserves it in his death. Um, so then we get back to a scene where Lydia and Jennifer, the building manager, 
have called the police. And when they called the police, Detective Jackson and Sergeant Tishish, Tashish is what he said. I, he has a confusing ass name. That sounds Polish. I could be wrong. It could be Greek or some shit. But um, I could be way off. It's, I thought it sounds Polish because I've heard it before. I could be wrong. But um, they come in and they buzz the buzzer. And, he, and the sergeant is like, why the fuck do you have to come down here and open the door? Why doesn't the buzzer work? He's like, what the fuck type of shit is this? And I was like, it's a little thing to complain about. But it's, you know, it's interesting that he picked up on it. He's sergeant, so he didn't get to be sergeant by not paying attention to details. So we're going to go with it. He gets upstairs and Jennifer and Lydia, they talk to him and they meet him. And she tells him uh, he wor- where he works. And uh, he's like, do they, he asked, does he have a girlfriend, does, what's his name, David have a girlfriend or a wife? He's like, no, he's gay. And um, he's like, oh, okay. And he said, he asked him what else was about him, what else he did. And they told him where he worked. And he went in and he looked at the body, body, looked at the murder scene and all that. He came on out and he talked to Linda again. And she said, listen. He had a friend staying with him, uh, with him, and he's like, "Who was the friend's name?" He says, "Andrew." He's like, "Your last name?" He's like, "Kunani." They couldn't, they couldn't pronounce that man's name right for anything in this world. I mean, Andrew is half Italian. His mother is Italian, and his father is Filipino. So that might it's, it's an unusual name, you know. It's not you. I've never really heard of Kunanin before. Kunanin is really unusual, so that's probably why they couldn't pronounce it correctly. Um, but basically, he asked her, what hair color is uh, David's hair? He's like, oh, it's blonde. He's like, okay, well, that's not David because his hair, that hair color is black. She asked, what color, hair color is um, Andrew's? He's like, oh, it's, um, it's black or something. And he's like, okay, well, then that's Andrew, and uh, David killed him. But what we know is... David is on the run with Andrew, and Andrew killed uh, Jeffrey, and Jeffrey is rolled up in the rug. But they later find that out because um, they um, the coroner comes. He says, listen, I'm not going to unroll the body because I don't want to lose no valuable evidence. So we're going to get as much of him up as possible uh, and send Jeffrey's ass to the lab so that we can um, get all the evidence um, popping and get every, all the details we need. So he comes back with the results. He said, hey, this is not an Andrew, and this damn sure ain't no David. This motherfucker's name is Jeffrey Trail. And he's like, who is Jeffrey Trail? He's like, I don't know, but all I know is this is a Jeffrey Trail. So um, when they're in the apartment, when they're in David's apartment, they're looking through everything because they have to investigate, and they find all his um, his porn magazine and some power bottom magazines and some miss of something and things, some like some some BDSM type Dom Dom submissive type magazine something like to that effect I don't know um you know just different sexual kinky magazines that you look at um so he's like well they're into this stuff and it's like and you know, he's older and he's homophobic and you can pretty much pick it up and uh he feels like it was a crime of passion and it just went wrong um He's still looking for both of them now because now he's like, well, um, both of them are on the run. And she, w- Linda was saying, well, it, it couldn't have been um, David because David is not like this. He's not the type of person. He was like, well, from um, he you'll be surprised, basically. And he had the same sentiment when he went to um, David's parents' house. He talked to uh, David's father and... And he was like, my son would never do this. He's not this type of person. We're raising him to be this type of person. He's not a murderer. And I know that my son didn't do this. And he's saying to um, uh, Sergeant Tashish is saying to David's father, what's his name? Howard Madsen. Uh, he's played by John Lacey. And uh, he's uh, telling his father, Howard, oh, there's a lot, there's a great deal about your son that you don't know. But what the sergeant doesn't know is he's hinting at his son being gay. But, you know, um, there's a scene later on after Amy Mann is singing that shows um, David telling his father, Howard, and I got into, 
I got the scholarship about this architect program and I was top of my class and I did a great essay and here you go. He's like, I'm so proud of you. I love you and I, this is great work, son. He says, dad, I'm gay. He just blurted it out. I'm like, well, shit, you're not going <laughs> to... He ain't going to give him an intermission. You just going to say it. I was like, well, I guess the best way to say it is to get that shit on out of there. So he, um, he's like, Dad, I'm gay. And he was like, taken aback. He was like, uh, the fuck? Okay. What I did like is he said, um, give me a moment so I don't say the wrong thing. Because for me, there's a number of people who their family, um, disowns them completely because they're gay what he basically told him was i can't sit up here and pretend that i agree with your lifestyle that i agree with homosexuality or lesbianism or anything else i don't agree with it but i tell you this i love you more than i love my own life and you can see david immediately crying and immediately getting emotional and he was like you know he's still proud of him and he loves you you know he's like i love you baby i despite it all i love you and then david starts really really crying and he's wiping his tears and his dad was like well now none of that you know no need to cry it's gonna be all right and he's like okay and he was like but one thing i don't understand is why would you wait to tell me that you're gay when you get this news he's like well you know good news bad news so, you know good news i'm smart as fuck i'm gonna be an architect and i got I'm so smart, they're going to pay for the shit. Bad news, I'm homosexual. I was like, ha, bitch, ha! Hey, what the fuck, David? Shit, I guess people would view that as bad news. I don't see the issue, personally. I'm, like, I'm not fucking used to do your thing. Like, I don't see the problem. But this is like mid nine. Well, no, it's late 90s. So, you know, there's a small town people. I'm pretty sure they're country folk. Um, they're very religious. And it shoots in between scenes of David going hunting with his father, Howard. And this father, Howard, you can tell that he, his father knows he's not a person of bloodshed. Because when he tries to take him hunting and to kill the ducky or some shit... He's like, I don't like this shit. He's running away from the gun. He was like, no, it's too loud. I don't like it. Like, don't kill him. He's like, listen, okay. When he gets in the truck, his dad says, hey, man, hey, look, don't worry about it, my son. You know, I love you. You're not a hunter. That's okay. Everybody ain't a hunter. You know, it's just not for you. This shit ain't for you. So we, we try fishing. Fishing is cool, you know. Yeah, I don't know what it is about fish. Like, shooting an animal makes me feel like, ah, unless it's, like, self-defense. If I had to defend myself, then fuck it, bitch. You go out. You gotta go, because I ain't going. Fuck all of that. And you'd go before I will. Bullshit. Don't, don't fuck around. But it's something about fishing. It's like, you feel bad for killing other animals, but you don't see a lot of people feel bad for killing fish. Now, I don't, you know, people feel bad for chickens. They feel bad for turkeys. Dogs, cows, pigs, horses, uh, skunks, uh, squirrel, deer, doe. Nobody feel cats. Nobody feels bad for fish. You know, like turtles and fish. People will feel bad for frogs before they'll feel bad for a fish. I'm like, that's kind of. I feel like fish. And, like, all, like, the marine life, like, crabs and shit. I feel like they get, like, the, you know, except for sea turtles. People don't like the whole, when you fuck with sea turtles. Or any type of turtle, like a snapping turtle. Any type of turtle in water or some shit. They, they don't like that, you know. You don't hear too many people fucking with jellyfish. Because, you know, nobody want to get a hold of them tentacles, bitch. Because it'll be over, okay. Fuck around and hit your ass like they did Nemo's daddy. She like, zzz, pass out and shit. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I'm like, that's fucked up. So, you don't want to shoot animals, but you're okay with fishing. I guess, you know, it's a hook that's going in their mouth and shit. It's like, all right, well, I don't actually see them die. And they are delicious. Unless you got them for one of those radioactive waste river plants. Then perhaps that won't be the best idea. But, you know, his, his father has understanding that... My son is not a bloodshed man. He don't do none of the hunting. He's not a shooter. You know, he he's none of that shit. 
he is a, a, a kind, gentle hearted man. He's not, you know, he doesn't do that. I'm a hunter and I don't give no fuck. My son gives a few fucks. He has a lot of fucks to give. So he's like, my son didn't do that. And, and you know, so the last scene of the, of the movie basically gets into, um, The last scene of the show, um, last scenes, really. What's his name? Dave? I'm getting messed up. I was about to call him Cody because uh, the actor, David Madsen, his real name is Cody Fern. And, um, like I said, his dad, Howard Madsen, is John Lacey. And Jeffrey Trail is Finn Whitrock. And as we all know, Andrew Cunanan is Darren Crisis, or Chris. I think it's Darren Chris. Um, so I was about to call his ass Cody. David and Andrew are at a diner and they're talking about David reminds Andrew when he first met him. Now when he first meets him, he is, you know, talking about him having all this money and all these friends and influence and all of these beautiful things. And he immediately wanted to be with him, but he was like, I never thought somebody like you would want to be with me. And he was like, I wanted you the moment I saw you, I was ready to go up to the room. And he was like, remember that time you told me that you made them change your room a few times because you didn't like the room? And he was like, yeah, I remember that, I remember that. And then he finally was like, um, you knew you were going to kill Jeff, didn't you? You didn't lose it. You had your marbles intact. You knew what you were doing, and you, you killed him because you wanted to kill him. He finally, nobody else really figured you out. I'm figuring you out now. But Jeff finally pulled your card. He finally saw you for the monster, the monstrosity that you are as a human, you know, and you killed him for it. I always wanted to be like you, but now I realize I'm nothing like you. Nothing at all. And he really starts going in on Andrew. Really, not really going in, just telling the truth. Like, just saying, you're a fucking monstrosity. You're not who you claim to be. You claim to be this person and claim to do that person. He was talking about, oh, well, we can go, we can go uh, across the border and and tell the Mexicans that we're um that we're actors from L.A. And he's like, you you just don't ever stop, do you? You just don't ever stop lying. You don't ever stop pretending. And it it makes me so interested in the real Andrew. And I know he's you know he's dead. It's just like, damn, I wish he was alive. He's one of those people. He will be famous. Um. He'll make sure he's famous just cause. And I just always wanted to know. I just want to know what he. Not always because I didn't know him like that. I just want to know what he was really like. Like obviously he's you know he's a fucking maniac. But I wanted to know everything else, all the other layers. Cause like and what else happened to him? Because he that motherfucker don't just wake up and be crazy. Like something happened to that motherfucker. You know. And so then. Andrew, he's like, yo, you can't, you can't just stop, can you? You can't ever just be yourself. And Andrew gets upset. He doesn't like that he said that, but it is what it is. So they're driving, and um, Andrew is trying to make the best of the drive, and he's still trying to act like things are good. He's like, well, we can be something, can't we? And to be quite honest with you, it's like, I don't think it would happen. Um... He really just David is not interested in being with Andrew. He doesn't want him. He's rejecting him, and so basically they end up. He pulls the car over because Andrew was like, "You know what? Fuck you, bitch. Ain't no. I, I keep trying to make this little illusion with putting you in my life and whatnot, but bitch, you don't want to play ball. So since you don't want to play ball, you ain't gonna play at all, bitch. So he ro- he pulls the car over and to this like little dirt rock road. You don't look country ass roads and shit. And then he has him get out. And he points the gun at David. And he said, you know what? It could have been real. And David gets on his dick. He said, oh, no, no. <laughs> Trying to play along. You know, he's like, it can be real. He's like, no, no, no. It's too late, bitch. I know you. It's too late. It can't be real. It could have been real. But it won't be. Because you won't let it be real. You won't just let shit be. And I'm like, nigga, you, you're insane. That's why I won't just let shit be. You're crazy. I don't know if you realize this or not. You are crazy. Okay, sir? Nuts. 
fucking whack job. That's what you are. Fucking whack job. He's just insane. He's like, I, I, it can be like that. It, we can make it work. It can, you know, all these. And he's trying to. And then at the end, he was like, you know what, Andrew, it would never be that way. And I don't feel that way about you. And basically, like, you just need to get the fuck over it. And and they talk, and Andrew turns around real quick. He kind of comes to, like, all right, whatever. And uh, he turns around real quick, and David takes the fuck off. But Andrew can hear his feet. So then he starts shooting at him. So then Andrew, um, as he's shooting at him, David, he's running and running. He gets into this trailer, and he has this um, moment where... He's in the trailer, and he sees his dad as his old self when he was a little boy. When his um, when David was a little boy, he sees Howard as a grown man back, having that, you know, flashback. And um, he's pouring coffee. And then he turns back around, and then it returns to the actual scene that David is running. And Andrew misses the first shot or so, but that second shot, he gets him right in his back. And you can see, like, the blood splatter. I'm like, oh, I like David. David is nice. Jeez, man. So, he, you know, David's on the ground. He's choking. I think yeah, he punctured one of David's lungs because he was choking, and it wasn't any blood coming up yet, but it, you, you could hear a gargle. I'm like, he can't even breathe, and you can... I think he punctured one of them shits. So, David rolled over. I don't understand the purpose of rolling on your back. If you can't breathe forward, then how are you going to breathe? If you can't breathe and you're laying forward, I don't know how you're going to breathe on your back, but I, I could be wrong. Um, so, then Andrew walks up to David and he shoots him in the head. I think he shoots him in the eye. Um, and that was that. I'm thinking that visual of him running into that 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 house on the lake and seeing his dad i think that was like from my understanding of things when you have a near death experience there's like a level of dmt that releases and throws you into a hallucinatory a hallucinate state like you're hallucinating while you're dying or before before you die or about to die because you know it's all like all the juices are flowing very quickly so i think that's what that scene was so he kills um david basically and then this this crazy fucker he lays down and he lays his head on david you know like he's like oh i in a way like oh it could have been real if only you would have played along one of them crazy bitch moments it's like bitch i i love this show but i i don't know i i just don't know so that was basically the end of the show uh, Andrew went back to his Jeep that he took from, I believe he took it from Jeffrey. Either David's car or it was Jeffrey's car. Um, he left David in the middle of that field like he was trash. And just, you see a scene where they focus on David's body. And they, then they go over to the water and then they go to the sky and then they, they, you know, zoom out. And that was sad as fuck, but I guess, you know... I guess that was just how it went. So that was the end of the show, and it's so depressing. I can't wait for next week's show. Uh, can you? So yeah, just um, I'll see you guys later. It was a great show to me. One of the uh, articles from the Vulture, um, it's like a, it's like a fashion magazine article or something. They're going over it because it's about Gianni Versace. It's about fashion. A great fashionista who fashionista or whatever who was murdered and slain and i said i think they said at his pinnacle like at his height he was slain and they said the theme that is consistent with andrew kunanen is he kills men who he wish he could be who he could have been or had no chance of ever being he kills men um jeffrey and david they were on their way to great careers with architecture and their military career um, Lee Miglin, he was basically the, the end result of who and what, um, David could have been as, him, as far as him being an architect. Um, and Versace, he was loved by everyone and he was, you know, had so many accolades and he had so many accomplishments and he, that's pretty much why, you know, his whole, 
MO was to kill people who he wants to be like. It said that his whole, um, his, what he did was basically he tried to rise to the top on people who he saw coming up. And when they let dropped him and he didn't see that he can go up with him, he would kill him. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It, to me, it kind of reminded me of like a um, a, a white, a, a, an Asian white male gay version of Superhead. I don't know if it's just me, but it kind of, you know, he's a hoe. He's in the industry. He's a secret. And then when they done with you, they done with you. You know, it's like, it just kind of reminded me of that shit. Except for she ain't kill nobody. She just, well, she probably killed your... You can't really kill a man's reputation unless you say he's gay or a child unless Well, not really a child molester because we see that shit with R. Kelly, so... I think just gay. But even that might change soon. But, yeah, that was a good show. And I think that was a good summary from The Vulture. Um, I'll put the link from The Vulture down below because they had a lot of good things that I liked that they were... And cite my sources and everything. Uh, they were discussing uh, that I really enjoyed. So, I will put a link in the video and description box down below. I'll see you guys later. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So, bye you guys. Mwah.